This episode 1128, and it's the Relevant Podcast here in Orlando. I'm your host, Cameron Strang, and joining me from Loverland, Virginia, for the last time in 2023, Jesse Carey. Hello, hello. From Nashville, Tennessee, artist, producer, mogul, Derek Miner. What up, though? Just down the street there, our managing editor, downtown Emily Brown. Hey, y'all. And in LA, you know from Social Club Misfits, it's Marty. What's up? The whole crew is here to celebrate, to... Wrap up 2023. It's our last episode of the year. So, you know, wanted to make sure everybody was able to be here. 2023 yeah. was a weird year for for a lot of people. You know, like. I feel like here on, like post pandemic and stuff, every year is kind of like, oh, that was a weird one, wasn't it? I think it's just going to. I think we were surprised by this one being weird because 2020, oh man, pandemic. 2021, still a little pandemic. 2022, we're like, okay, things are going to get back to normal. And it didn't. But then we came into 2023 and we're like, okay, finally, we're far enough away from COVID. Things will be back to normal. Yeah. So I think this year being weird or hard or whatever surprised a lot of people. I know Facts. I'm one of those. I did not, I did not think 2023 would go the way it did mm-hmm. for me personally. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. but I'm looking around. And it feels like everybody's kind of saying that right now. Like this is a weird year. Tell us your horror story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I got him. <laughs> Emily knows. 20, 20, 2023. 2023, everyone's like, it's my Jordan year. Then like halfway through it, they're like, we're going to have a nope. Kobe year next year. We're going to go full blown Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Listen, it was my Jordan year, but it's more like Wizards era. Yeah. Um, <laughs> White Sox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is B- Birmingham Barons era. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Year. yeah. He was batting about 180, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. So you're I, saying 2024, not, we should just expect it to be weird. Like, don't, like, I don't want to say lower our expectations, but just, I don't know. Jay, How do you I think you just don't for, have expectations. You just don't prepare. Yeah. You just, you know, you just. <laughs> just let it be. But see, I'm a future person. I have to live, my brain lives nine months down the road. Just that's why, you know, launch companies and whatever. You're just living in the future. And so you do try to anticipate where you're going, where things are going. So for me, when I do think about 2024, it's hard not to have expectations for how I think it'll go. Right. But you're right. It ain't going to go that way. So mm. somehow it got to just shift our mindset. Anyway, end of the year. Uh, we have a great show in store for you. Coming to later, we talk to Lecrae. We have slices. And at the end of the show, we predict 2024. I'm going to tell you. All right. AI, because 2023 was the year of AI. AI had, wrote a bunch of questions for us to answer and predict next year. So you'll you'll see it's coming up at the end of the show. So. All right, we're moving the show along. Stay tuned up next. It's Slices. Loaded up, pull up the planes. Stick your kid down on your hands. We did not come in to dance. We sliding off with the bands. Don't be no hero to give me my yiddos. I know it's a hit on my head. I thank you all in advance. Cause I'm sliding off with the bands. 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 Don't be no hero to give me my yiddos. I know it's a hit on my head. I think you all in advance. I'm sliding off with the bands. Say cheese, Gouda. Better stand up or move. That's a shout out to Luda. Can't keep up with that. They can pull out the scooters. Can't say we ain't shining. My soul is a ruba. You're listening to Derek Minor and Cannon. The song is Bands. We told you about the single release a couple weeks ago. Today's show is brought to you in part by the new podcast, Not the Sermon. It's a hilarious new podcast that's a blend of comedy and theology. Join Eric and Jamie, a student pastor and senior pastor, as they discuss church culture, current events, music, and anything that's not the sermon. The holiday episode just dropped where they write and perform their own Calvinist Christmas carols. If you like debating theology and irreverent humor, this is for you. Search for Not the Sermon wherever you listen to your podcast. Just remember, this is Not the Sermon. Okay, it's time for Slices. What do you have, Jesse? All right, I have a, a slice about Elon Musk and Cybertruck. Um, the Cybertruck <laughs> is the electric vehicle released by Tesla. That you wanted when they announced it. You were like, I'm going to get I know, and I'm still day. not. I'm st- I still think it's pretty rad. I know it's controversial, and I'm interested to, to hear before I get into the news. And I, uh, the, the, I did see the video of it struggling to haul a Christmas tree out of like a little a snow bank and getting towed out by towed like a by big a Ford. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's, are yeah. you serious? 
Yeah. It was like yeah. it was like oh, off road. Yeah. It was like on the on a hill in the snow, the Cybertruck was. And the Ford truck was on the road, towing it like onto the road. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like the F one fifty was off road too, you know. Anyway. But yeah, it was not a good look for the brand new, highly acclaimed. Do we think the next generation will make it look more like a truck and less like a five year old's drawing of a truck? I like it. There is intention behind that. It's actually Elon Musk's son told him you know, the future, sh- he has a, he has a young son and I, this is in Walter Isaacson's new, I don't know if the, he's Walter Isaacson, the biographer has a new book about Musk. And there's an anecdote in there about how his son tells him the future should look like the future. And basically like, if you're going to make a car for the future, make it look like it's from the future. And so your point about a five-year-old, you know, it, it's not off base because it literally was sort of the, the concept for it was wow. what was, you know, very childlike, but either way, um, I know it's controversial. I think they look rad. Um, I, they, the price point has gone up considerably since you, you could first reserve them. So if I ever purchase one, it won't be anytime soon. Yeah, he announced it. When he announced it, he said 500 mile range starting at 30K or 40K. And then it came out that it's a 250 mile range and it starts at 60K. So yeah. You kind of missed, at, missed it yeah. a little there. Yeah. But don't worry. Be in my Nissan Rogue. We're going strong. But he did announce some new cool features that, you know, I'm very curious about. I want to read a, 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 a tweet that, that he, or an X or, or whatever, that he posted. Post. And then I want to provide a little commentary. He said, we are going to offer a mod package that enables Cybertruck to traverse at least 100 meters of water as a boat. Mostly just need to upgrade cabin door seals. The word mostly there seems pretty loaded, <laughs> in my opinion. Also, I, I, it's made out of stainless steel. Like, yeah, it's not... Right. The, the other thing, too, is... He, it's, it's a big said, floating oh. battery. I don't want water and batteries mixing. But here's like, the thing. He, but but, but, but if, you, if you really dissect the tweet, which obviously I have, he says hmm. that enables the, the Cybertruck to traverse at least 100 meters of water as a boat. My thing is... Any car going fast enough can traverse 100 meters of water. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're basically across the top. stone. 100 <laughs> meters. That I feel like you know. Okay, we can. But 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 when when are you going to use that? Because it's not like I'm going to go creek crawling, have a little, little day out on the on in the inlet. You know, in in the cyber truck. Like, what scenario am I traversing 100 meters of water? Like, wh- why would I buy that mod package? It's not like, like I said, I'm going to take the family for a, for a day out on the boat. Who's this for? And do you think this is just one of those things of him just saying something and forcing engineers away to kind of figure it out? Mm. It's a weird length because that's 328 feet. That's like a 32-story building. So it's like not just crossing the creek. It's a 30-story building laying on its side. But what yeah, is it's a football that field. for? Yeah, what's that for? Like, what are you boating D- to? Dirt. Derek, you're a Tesla guy, right? What, yes. what are you, and, and and you like me thinks it looks rad. Yes. The the Cybertruck. Yes. What do you think of the boat mod? Man, <laughs> but <laughs> I think that Elon Musk should just go away and just stop Damn. talking. Like I like bro, just stop processing all of your ideas on X. Like and just let us live because it makes me not even like my car as much anymore. You know. know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, he's, bro, yeah. like, this is stupid. He's bad like, for his own brand. Yeah. Th- this is stupid. Like, bro, nobody wants that. I just want the truck to at least be able to carry a Christmas tree, bro. Like, figure that out first. You need to buy a journal. I'm just going 328 feet. 328 feet. You go out into the lake. If you can make it waterproof enough to go out 300 feet, why can't it go further? Like, what, what are you going to do? Start sinking after 300 feet? Like, what? That's very specific. And like, yeah, you go out 300 feet, you can't get back. So then you're just out 300 feet. But yeah, you can only go out 150 water. feet and then turn around. Yeah. yeah. Here's here's a missed opportunity because they don't have an air intake. It's electric, right? Like, right. Just a giant snorkel, and you just drive on the bottom and just come back out the other side. Oh, you know, if you're just sealing seal up the up. doors, yeah, you're sealing up the doors. It's go see, for it. I, if you're telling me, look, look, if you tell me you can ride 100 meters on top of the water, mm-hmm. or you can go like 600 meters on the bottom of the lake, oh heck yeah, that that'd be awesome. Like driving underwater, yeah. that, that seems like a real missed opportunity because there's no way a stainless steel 
Cybertruck's floating, just riding along the bottom of the lake. How do you like? How do you like to be at the lake one day, and you see a cyber truck drive up from out of the water and just kind of beep beep. See ya. <laughs> Everyone would love it. I feel like how they got you know, there was like there, bef- like that's how far it got before it exploded. So like yeah, I can go up to that. I can go up to three hundred and something feet because when we did it, the car everyone died inside. But if you just right before you stop it at forty nine is when it gets bad. Forty eight, yeah. nothing happened. That's kind of how they got to that conclusion. <laughs> I want to see, yeah, just be on the beach one day, hanging out in a cyber truck, just drives right out of the ocean. You know, that <laughs> you would know, be more. Have you outside. have you seen amphibious cars? I mean, they have the duck boats and stuff in Boston yeah. and places. I love those duck but boats. Like we have amphibious cars here in Orlando. Like you go to dinner down oh, yeah. at Disney I've Springs, and there's this like waterfront restaurant, and then you can like you can rent car rides, and they'll like they drive right into the lake and they just turn into a boat and then they drive right out and they park, you know? So I went to a, I went to a museum the other day. It was like an automotive museum (laughs) and they had, they had one of those from like the fifties and it was awesome. It looked like an old Cadillac, but it had, but it could drive in the water, be a boat. And it had like newspaper clippings of reviews on it. Like when this, this like, hot rod that could drive into the water came out in like the fit in like the body of a 57 Chevy. And one of the news clipping says by far the most fashionable way to die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, even, back oh then they were like, even back then they were like, this is a terrible idea. Let's keep cars, cars. Yeah. All right. What do you have, Emily? Um, yeah, there's a really fun new AI tool that came out recently on Microsoft copilot. Uh, you can make, your own song, like a total song. Oh, whoa. Um, just using AI. Wait. So all you have to do is put in a prompt. Like it's just like, a, you can do like a one sentence prompt, like, um, you know, like a pop song about Jesus. And within like a minute, it'll come up with lyrics, instruments, it'll sing it. It's like a whole thing. So I wanted to do right. this because I feel like we need to come up with a song. Yeah, you know, we got two artists here, you know. Okay. So, you know, maybe you all's jobs are in jeopardy. So I put in there right before we went on there. Emily told me about this. I was like, what is the most absurd thing I could ask it to make? And then I'll see and we'll play it. And we'll, and you too, we'll do prompts. Uh, so I said, I want a song about how awesome the Orlando magic are sung in the style of Sufjan Stevens. And it generated a song called magic in the air. Okay. And I'm going to play it for you now. Magic in the air is a pretty good name, by the way. Uh, here we Very go. Good name. I have not heard this song. I just had it do right. it. So we'll I'm see excited to hear here this here. actually. In the city of sunshine, where dreams come to play, there's a team on the rise, making magic every day. There's skills on the court, like a symphony of sound, Orlando magic at the talk of the town. With a touch of an that's pretty good <laughs> the lyrics in the city of sunshine where dreams come to play there's a team on the rise making magic every day there's skills on the court like a symphony of sound orlando magic they're the talk of the town Ooh, that's the verse and then the chorus is with a touch of finesse and a shot in the air Ooh, they're spreading magic you can feel it everywhere they're soaring to new heights reaching for the stars orlando magic they're rewriting the memoirs <laughs> there you go not bad. Man, All right. Man. I want to do some prompts. You guys give me prompts. I'm not prompts. mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I was going to say, the new Owl City sounds like a banger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really Sufjan. It is more yeah. Owl City for sure. Owl City. That's good. That's, that's smart. Yeah. Uh, what else What else should we do with it? Um, Let's do a song about Orlando Magic in the style of Kiss by a Rose. Seal. No, no, not Orlando Magic again. <laughs> give me another topic. I, I want to I hear, I wanna hear uh, a Hillsong Praise and Worship song in the style of Van Halen. That's great. There you go. That's awesome. Okay. That's crazy. Fire, 
That's pretty good. Pretty good. I want to make samples with this. Oh my god! I was gonna say it's a very self-aware style of songwriting. I mean, he literally says, "With guitar licks, we will sing your praise." It's like, okay, it's a little on the nose, but uh, I'm kind of feeling it. It says, "We'll sing your praise in the AI way." It like rhymed. Told you exactly what it was doing. It will sing your praise in the AI way. I was like, all right, Van Van Halen style. Derek, come up with one. What's the prompt? Song about green bean casserole in the style of Drake. Oh wow! <laughs> Wonder if it can rap. We'll see. No, in the style of Kendrick Lamar. That's going to be more intricate. Oh yes, yeah, in the style of Kendrick Lamar. Okay, it's generating. Green bean casserole, cooking up a storm. Got the recipe. Let me show you how it's done. Fresh green beans, crispy onions on top. Gonna blow your mind when they hit your taste buds. Casserole flow hot, added it up of it. Green beans popping, flavors keep buzzing. Serving up the dish that'll make you holler. Green bean casserole, the ultimate. That was actually, oh bro, that was actually that. pretty good, bro. I'm not going to hold you, bro. That was Dang, actually, I got to make some samples on this thing. Whoa. That was pretty impressive. What's it, called? What's it called, Emily? What's the website? What's the website? The website is called uh, suno.ai, S-U-N-O. S-U-N-O.ai. All right, there goes my afternoon. Thanks a lot. There's Great. just going to be no reason yeah. to be a human here pretty soon. <laughs> just show, I'm telling you, we're heading toward Wally. The, the opening scene of Wally, where they're yeah, up in the ship just, and they're just yeah. sitting around consuming, and they don't. That's that's where we're headed, y'all. Listen, they looked happy before Wally showed up. I'll say it. Wally I know, they look pretty chill, man. <laughs> hey, I'm just kicking walk. back, having my diet coke, watching the screen right in front of me. That's a good. That's a good life. Yeah, let's go. That's a Saturday afternoon for me. There's also an AI app that makes you feel like you're famous, so you can pull up. It has an Instagram live feed and it's all bots and they'll interact with you while you're talking. And they'll <laughs> like your comments. It'll be like 17,000 people interacting and you can cut it on hater mode and then they'll have haters in it. That's hater genius mode? for music promotion for sure. Yeah. yeah. My so, new song. So guys, a yeah, guy's it, been using that to get into like clubs and show people that he's famous. So he'll act like he's on live and he's like, yo, can I get into your club? Like, you know, I'm lit right now. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, that's hilarious because that is the awkward thing about like some of the people I follow, like they're, when they go live and there's like three people in there. It's like, yeah, and then you like want to leave like Homer Simpson in the they bushes. You want to like, but they know that uh, they saw you come in. They saw you go because they only had four people. This is like, like, every my man Cameron's here supporting me. That's how it is, man. That's how it is. I, I, I feel Tough like the there. internet numbers must be inflated because I'm not, I'm not seeing I'm seeing super famous people only get like. 20 or 30 yeah. people on live or something like it's crazy. Well, now that now we'll all have 17,000 and we'll yeah, all look like it's it. like, <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. What do you have, Marty? All right, guys. I don't know if anyone's heard about this yet, but, um, atheists rejoice. Chick-fil-A might be opening on a uh, Sunday. Um, no in way. New York city. What? No, I, I don't know if Are they're watching the show. If they're, if, yeah, I'm serious. So I don't, first off, let me get to the, cause I saw Emily's reaction. I don't appreciate that. Um, but there are atheists that might be watching the show or listening and just, they love the banter that we have. I just but, the way that you introduce this, um, yeah. So Chick-fil-A possibly seven locations are going to be opening up on Sunday. Um, in New York, um, so basically the rule, the law that's coming in is that, um, you know, in Florida, we have it. When you're driving up the highway, there are restaurants off the highway. And so right. there are restaurants when, in New York, same situ- situation. Um, they're requiring every co- store to be open seven days a week if you're on this medium where there are other stores. It's actually it's like a it's actually a bigger store with many stores in it. So just think like that. You know, if you're from Florida, you get it. Yeah, if you're from Florida, you get it. It's like food court inside of a a building. So any of these stores have to be open seven days a week. So Chick-fil-A, they have seven locations on this path. Seven Chick-fil-A's could possibly be open on a Sunday because they're forced to be open. Um, Christians have taken this as a personal attack. I don't know how that happened, but 
they've taken this as like, you know, our freedoms are being, and then I, I saw a lot of the comments are like a lot of Jewish people under the comments, like, Hey, listen, it, we, we've been through this. You'll make it out alive. You know, um, cause Saturdays, <laughs> so it's like, it's like this funny battle that I'm starting to see online between different religions and being like, well, you know, so, but I will say, um, there's a lot of fight against it. There's a lot of pushback, but if you live in the, uh, New York Queens area and you take, uh, the highway that has seven Chick-fil-A's on it, you might be able to get a, a Chick-fil-A sandwich on a Sunday. And, uh, I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to play Sinful. out, but I feel yeah. like, uh, you know, what's funny is like, I know people who work for Chick-fil-A. They don't go to church. They don't go to church. These are some of the wildest people I ever met. I'm trying to mentor them and it's really hard, but they work at Chick-fil-A and they don't go to church. So you're saying they're just they're sleeping they're it off on it for Sunday, the Sunday anyways. off because I've worked yeah. retail for ten years when I was growing up, and you had to work Christmas Eve. You know, you had to work all this. So people naturally find Chick Fil A to have that one day off on Sunday to enjoy. I actually, have a Sabbath. Um, but anyway, long story short, Chick Fil A possibly opening seven locations Sunday in New York City. They'll probably fight it, but we'll see what's going to happen. Do you do you remember a couple of years ago, like story came out about this guy who had like a side hustle that on Saturday nights he would go buy up all the Chick Fil A sandwiches, yeah, and then it's he would mischief. sell them. The guys, he would sell yeah. them on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mischief. The, yeah, right. mischief. Yeah. the company mischief did it, uh, where yeah. they preserved at like nine p.m. They preserved like yep. freeze dried a hundred sandwiches, a hundred like they uh-huh. catered it. Then then in the morning they took orders and whoever wanted Chick Fil A on Sunday morning market um, demand. You yeah, know? L.A. They did yeah. L.A. They did New York. They did Atlanta. I think they did like one other location. But yeah, I mean supply and demand, baby. Black market, black market Chick Fil A. All right, what do you have, Derek? So, have you ever heard of the uh, the conspiracy that birds aren't real? Whatever I that. Absolutely, oh, yes. Yeah. Well aware. Explain. I've never heard this in my life. <laughs> You've never heard it before. <laughs> no. How can birds not be real? I look at them out the window. They're right there. So Are what this sure? guy says that right. So what this guy says is actually a satirical controversy. Actually, yeah, it's like perform. It's like performance art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what he said. Yeah. So what he said is he's like it's so preposterous that it caught on. But what he was saying was that the government killed twelve billion birds and replaced them with drones. And that I've been pooped with- on by birds, so I, I can firmly attest it's not a drone. Right. So they're saying that we're not watching birds. Birds are watching us. Right. So that's that's the whole thing. Well, he might be right eventually because (laughs) people that are making drones are finding out birds are perfectly designed to be able to fly in a way that is natural and efficient. So they're working on drones that actually move like birds. So in the future, some drones may be indistinguishable from birds in the way that they move. And that's actually actively being worked on at the you know, have you been to the air and space museum and they and they have all the early prototypes of an airplane before the Wright brothers remember yeah. like they made the flappy ones <laughs> you know they've yeah. been trying they bounce that don't work it doesn't work i don't know I, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I don't want to be the. I've seen those like Leonardo da Vinci like wing ones. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a step above jumping off the roof with like a Mary Poppins umbrella and just hoping <laughs> for the best. <laughs> like, all right, this isn't going to end well. Worst case scenario, break an ankle. But it's yeah, birds aren't real. The it, that's like the cornerstone of uh, Robert Kennedy's uh, Jr. his uh, his presidential campaign, right? I think <laughs> his conspiracy theories. <laughs> Love it. There you go. That's hilarious. That'll do it for Slices. Stay tuned. Up next, Lecrae joins us. listening to april june the song is it's all my fault well today's show is brought to you in part by relief and development organization mennonite central committee have you started christmas shopping yet sometimes the best gifts are the ones that can't be pulled off a shelf this season ask your friends and family to browse mennonite central committee's giving guide which is full of gifts like clean water and school meals for people across the globe you can even give someone in need an eco-friendly stove or a bicycle 
MCC's relief, development, and peace work bring hope to people in the name of Christ. Visit mcc.org slash give hyphen now to find Christmas gifts that change lives. Again, mcc.org slash give hyphen now. Well, today's show is brought to you in part by Living Water International. This holiday season, ignite hope with Living Water. Join the global movement working to solve the urgent water crisis affecting 703 million people. Living Water is bringing clean water and the transformative love of Christ to millions. Right now, your generosity can create 5,000 new beginnings for those without safe water worldwide. Be a catalyst for positive change, one person, one community at a time, building flourishing communities, thriving children, and conquering despair with hope. Make a lasting impact at water.cc slash 50, where your support transforms lives and ensures a brighter future for all. Again, that's water.cc slash F-I-F-T-Y. Where our guest today is Lecrae. Uh, the rapper and entrepreneur has had a major year stepping into the world of film with the Christmas musical Journey to Bethlehem last month, launching a brand new podcast, The Deep End, uh, and more. We sat down with him to talk about the high moments of the year and find out what we can expect from him in 2024. Here's our conversation with Lecrae. Tell Chipotle don't be stingy with the clock, bro. Mama told me since a kid I've been extra. Doing donuts in a rental living room. Well, you've had a pretty big year. For starters, you were in your first major film, Journey to Bethlehem. How did you get involved in that? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> I have been wanting to, you know, dabble in the, in the acting world forever. Um, it's, it's something that I'm really like, you know, a passion of mine for years. And people knew this. And um, a, a, a friend of mine who used to actually be... <clears throat> My pastor, Brian Loris, he knew about my desire for acting and he happened to be connected to the director of Journey to Bethlehem and he threw my name out there and um, I was, you know, asked about an audition and I said, absolutely. Uh, and so um, I went in, I, I did my audition. Um, I got called back and I was like, man, I got to secure this role. So I got some acting lessons and uh, really just dove in and, um, you know, got the part. And from there, it was history. Do you have any plans to be a part of more films in the future? Yeah, actually, yeah. So there's been a few auditions, you know, kind of after the strike. The strike kind of held up a lot of things. So I had some opportunities. But of course, the strike just kind of closed those doors. So um, even though I may be <laughs> this very decorated musician, uh, as far as acting is concerned, you know, I'm almost starting from scratch. So I got to pay my dues and uh, and and really just, you know, get in there and and, uh, and work hard. What do you enjoy about acting as opposed to creating music? Um, I think, you know, when you can be a part of a bigger story, um, cause in, a, in a way, even in this life we're living, we're all like playing a role in a greater narrative. And when the story is really phenomenal, um, it just inspires you to play a part in that because you are a part of something that's so much bigger. And I love that kind of concept and that idea, even if it's the smallest role in like the Shawshank Redemption, that movie, that story was so powerful that your role played into that overall narrative. And that's uh, something that gets me excited. Do you think you'll stay in more faith-based films or are you kind of open to anything? Yeah, I'm open as long as the story's redemptive. You know, um, I like redemptive stories, stories that kind of paint a picture of healing or hope, um, not dark for dark sake, <laughs> you know, not just hopeless and like, oh my gosh. Um, I could definitely see like historical narratives would, would probably be exciting. You know, I would have loved to be in something like Oppenheimer or even, uh, you know, Inception, you know, those are, they're, they're still like this redemptive kind of picture in it all. Even, and it's just great art at the same time. I'm curious, how have your fans responded to you stepping into this new, different creative lane? I think this was a good film to, to kind of like step into because it's not too unfamiliar with what I've been doing musically. You know, it's, it's faith based. It's, it's, it's still connected. But then at the same time, they got to see me become someone else. And, and I think that's the beauty of acting is that you can become a different person. Oftentimes, if you become someone that's so far away from who you are as a musician or an artist, if people get a little blindsided and shaken up. Like, you know, if I would have came out as this, like, 
killer who was cussing up cussing up a storm. People were like, oh my God, what is happening right now? Um, so I think this is a good like intro for them to like kind of see that and they, they love the film. Um, so so many people love the film. You know, I, I've never been. A, I mean, just being honest, I've never been a big musical person. Uh, so it took a lot for me to like even engage like musicals, but this was so well done that I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. This is great. Throughout this process, did you learn anything about yourself or who you are as a creative? Yeah, for sure. I think um, I I was very hard on myself in terms of acting um, because. Uh, you know, again, when you're really decorated in one category, you want to do really well in the other, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, you're this incredible football player. Can you play basketball? You know, that's, that was kind of the question. So, um, and what I learned is that it's not about, you know, can you do it? It's about how hard are you willing to work to get the results you want? And so I just started seeing the progress step by step by step. A lot of people, you know, it's such a, it's a, it's not a long scene that I'm in, but it took work to, to nail that. It wasn't just natural. It was kind of like, it, that, that would not have been what I naturally had done. So what I learned about myself as a creative is that if I'm willing to put the work in, I can achieve the result, but it just takes doing the work. I had a vision of Jesus. He told me to give him my life. Gave him my sins. Yeah, I put it on him. He cleaned me up and he got me all right. I gon' run in circles, trying to find my purpose. Low bag, trying to feel something, but it was worthless. Well, in addition to your movie, you also launched a new podcast, The Deep End with Lecrae. What made you want to start that this year? I just, I felt like there's only so much you can say in a song. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to be a communicator through the medium of music and uh, through, through the arts. But there's certain things that I feel like um, I'm inspired by or I want to talk about or just the nuances. I get really tired of like the lack of nuance in society and culture. You know, there's there's no nuance in politics. There's no nuance in religion. There's no nuance in, I mean, just relationships. And, and we're really complex and dynamic people, but we always just try to live in these little tiny tribes that don't fully articulate all of who we are. So the deep end is like, hey, let's go to the deep end of the pool where it gets murky and it gets sticky and, and we got to wrestle. And um, and I just felt like it was time to talk about some of those things that people just are afraid to talk about. Um, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, just wanting to say, hey, I don't care. Let's let's get let's get deep. Let's get ugly. Let's get in the gray areas and see what happens. Yeah, I think that's a place a lot of people don't go, but we need to. Um, and that's a place that you went in a recent episode you did about Little Nas X and his faith that he's been speaking out about. Why was that a situation that you wanted to talk about? I think I wanted to talk about plenty of things and what happened with Little Nas X just allowed for those things to rise up and be articulated. You know, so talking about sexuality, sexual identities, and we're talking about you know, how the church treats uh, people outside of it. It, it. it was just so many things that I just felt like, oh my gosh, like where are all these like quips and little sayings coming from? Like no one is like putting thought into this. And it's probably because a lot of people are speaking devoid of connection and relationship with people. So um, I, I, I have access to a lot of celebrities, a lot of people with different worldviews, different lifestyles. And, um, and I think it's just important to have that nuance, you know, relational nuance, you know, not to validate or, or con condone particular things, but also not to condemn people. Like that's, that's not what we're here for. Yeah. There's almost a tension that we have to be willing to hold and make space for nuance. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to expand their mindset and allow nuance in, but wants to do it in a healthy way? Yeah. Well, I mean, one, you know, listen to people. Like, I think there's this misnomer that we have to figure this out on our own and not realizing people have been wrestling with this stuff for hundreds of years. <laughs> you know, there's so many voices that we can listen to and look to. Like you can literally, we can literally Google the questions that we have 
and get a ton of answers. One thing I would say is always look at four views. Like don't stick with one view on a particular topic. I think when you get four views, it allows you to wrestle with all the perspectives and then you can make probably an, an educated guess or, or educated decision about how you feel about something. So if everyone's like the best burger in the world is, is in and out burger, you can, you can either say, no, it's not. It's, it's, uh, you know, five guys. Or you can say, well, let me go to In-N-Out. Let me go to Five Guys. Let me go to Shake Shack. Let me go to Whataburger. And then I can make an educated decision on my own versus just like listening to all these barking things happening everywhere. And you may come to a nuanced decision. Well, you know what? The cheese is better here. The seasoning is better here. The bread is better here. And if I'm putting all this together, I would say this, you know, it's not just going to be this cut and dry thing. So I would tell people to wrestle and, and, and look for four perspectives on the thing you're wrestling with. Yeah, I think that's great advice and something I think we can all do moving forward, uh, which speaking of moving forward, what are you looking forward to in 2024? Um, man, getting some music out. Of course, um, I still love music. It's not like something that I'm, um, like the thing about music is it's, it's something you can do quickly and you can put it out. Um, not, when I say quickly, I mean quicker than film. So film may take months and then it won't see the light of day for months or, you know, uh, it could be a whole year. Um, with music, I can record something today and if I wanted to, it could be out next week. Um, and so I mean, I, I've been working on a lot of music and I'm excited for the world to hear this music, some cool collaborations. And, um, and then also, um, I have a book that it's like a coffee table book, um, of like poetry, reflections and pictures that I'm excited, uh, to, to, to release as well. So we'll see how that all goes. That's really exciting. You're a very creative person. Have you always been that way? Since I was a kid, man, you know, I was the only child for so long, 10 years and a latchkey kid, I had to entertain myself. So you just start getting really creative and finding ways to entertain yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you ever like make up stories and act them out? Did I? Like literally I would come home from school and no one's home. And in order to refrain from being bored, I would pretend like I was like in a in a, uh, uh, a spaceship and I was had to talk to all the people on the ship. And I had to like have robots cook me meals. And then, you know, when I leave the kitchen, I've left the spaceship and now I'm walking into like this foreign land and I'm like imagining all the different things. So I was like, I would turn the house into another planet, literally. So I was all the way out there. Do you think you'd ever want to write or direct a movie or television show? So the thing for me is like, I'm... I'm such a macro person. I'm not very micro. Like I have big ideas and big visionary things. And so I have tons of ideas like that. It's just getting into the weeds. I'm not the person to do that. So I would love to do to, to get some of these big ideas off, but I just need that person who wants to get in the weeds and like make those things become a reality. So we'll see. Yeah. I got family for miles running up the mileage. Made it through some trials and some tribulations. Now me and a team I have celebrating. Yeah, this is where we come from. Yeah, we did it. That was Lecrae. Make sure to check out his new podcast, The Deep End with Lecrae. It's out now. All right, stay tuned. Up next, we predict 2024. You're listening to MGMT. The song is Mother Nature. Today's show is brought to you in part by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. With Factor, you can eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. I'm a Factor customer, and I can't tell you how much I love Factor. <laughs> Everything comes fresh, not frozen, and it is ready in literally two minutes, which is perfect. You just heat it, 
and eat it. It's so good. And if you're looking to uh, lose a little weight in the new year, try their delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with uh, 550 calories or less per serving. They also have high protein meals, vegetarian meals. There's so many options. Head to factormeals.com slash relevant50 and use code relevant50 to get 50% off right now. Again, that's code relevant50 at factormeals.com slash relevant50 to get 50% off. Go do it. All right. Well, it's our last show of 2023. And when Emily and I were planning this episode out, we were thinking, well, should we do like a recap thing of the year? We're like, no, we don't want to talk about 2023. It's like that's good riddance to 2023, you know? So let's look ahead to 2024. We thought we would ask AI, since this was the year of AI, to um, give us questions of, you know, what we think will be happening in 20, 2024. So uh, here we go. We're just going to randomly go through some of these questions that ChatGPT wrote up for us. Some of these are straightforward. Some of these are weird. So we'll just kind of do a mission. Right. Uh, what celebrity will have the most outrageous fashion moment at the Oscars in 2024? At the Oscars? Oscars. Outrageous fashion. That's more of a Met Gala thing. Yeah. What do y'all think? I'm really hoping it's someone from like a serious project like Oppenheimer just comes mm. in with like a big boa and just you know really li- or like or like Jared Leto like a fake head of their own like really just going after it i really it is i really be Jared Leto he wore like a whole cat suit furry thing yeah who's Netflix, struggling right so. now who needs attention that's right that's good <laughs> that's good uh what athlete which athlete will become an unexpected social media sensation in 2024 John ja, Morant ja, 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 oh gosh oh gosh <laughs> he just came back he was a social media <laughs> sensation last year and he and he got suspended for 25 games we, we yeah, absolutely say, hope not we hope the wrong kind of sensation I want John ja Morant the only thing we see is clips of him dunking that's it that's no him and Elon Musk they can share a journal oh and then- no yeah. Do you know what I want? I want when I want a breakout star. I don't want someone in like a conventional sport. We they're oversaturated. I remember like back in the day when every once in a while some like random Olympian everyone would just know like Jackie Joyner Kersey. It was like dude, yeah, I know yeah. nothing about Michael track, Phelps. but dude, yeah, or like Dan and Dave or what? It's like I want some rando Olympian, but I want I want like a shot putter this time yeah. or, or someone yeah. that does like a bow and arrow thing. Like Love just let, let's all circle up behind a, a random Olympian that we all just get behind and just decide, you know what, you know, this is, this is the dude here, you know, I Love could it. also see like pickleball do that. such a thing this year. So maybe there will be like an actual a pickleball, athlete. pickleball player. Mm-hmm. That would be the first, dope. the first one. I watched him pro pickleball on, on TV one morning. <laughs> like it was on the ESPN. How bored were you? I'm, the ball doesn't go that fast. That's the thing. <laughs> like it's really like you can hit it really hard. It but, doesn't go that but fast. As, but as pickleball soon as it hits the ground, it's significantly more fun to play than watch. So agreed. Like tennis, agreed. At least with know? ping pong. At least with ping pong, they're whipping that thing around. You know. Right. Uh, what will be the hottest tech gadget of 2024, and how will it change our daily lives? What do you mm. think? It's got to be something with AI. I think the boat cyber, the boat cyber truck. <laughs> I mean, this year, a lot of good ones came out. There's that one that stand out from this year was the one AI that can translate your voice into any language and then in your tone. I think that one was incredible. Churches are starting to use that, which is always funny because it's like translations are terrible, but whatever. Can we make the opposite prediction? Because Apple's going all in on the AR glasses, like the, you know, have you seen that? And and you, and you got to plug into a battery pack. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how functional or how much improvement a device gives you. If you look like a big dork with goggles on walking down the street, plugged into a battery pack, no one's going to want it. I'm sorry. It you can, have to it plug can, into it, a battery pack while you use it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it, 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 I don't care if it makes you essentially a superhuman. If you look like that big of a dork, I'm sorry. It, no one's going to want the product. I mean, I'll say it. I feel the same way about the Cybertruck and people bought it. So, But uh, augmented reality, I think, will be the next big tech thing. But it'll be through like regular glasses that look like, you know, Warby Parkers or whatever. Like, I think it'll be mm-hmm. that. And the lenses will be AR. And they just cool. got to figure out the power source thing. That feels like it, Mission Impossible. Yeah. That's coming. Trust me. All right. Uh, which unexpected collaboration between musicians will produce the catchiest song in 2024? I already have it. It's going to come out. It's it's Morgan Wallen and uh, Drake. Oh, and Drake. 
Yeah, because they did the video yesterday. They're talking about in the studio now. I could see that happening. Drake and Morgan. That's crazy. Yeah. I I heard uh, Van Halen and Hillsong United are getting together. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard Van Halen getting name That's dropped the name in the song. Yeah, they name dropped themselves. And then, and then Van Halen style, we sing. Uh, praise to you. All right. Um, what shocking scandal will rock the world of entertainment or politics in 2024? I don't know. We have the capability of being shocked anymore. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Point. Point. There was one. there were a few this year that were like big moments what the donald trump supreme court thing is crazy in colorado yeah i was thinking more like scandal but yes politics would be really crazy politics is going to be insanity it's yeah, going to be yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be presidential election i, I think um, people are going to be I, like i'm tired of it like people are going to start i feel like we're starting to get worn out it's like so much craziness we're all getting tired of it mm-hmm. so you say that Agreed. but i do think maybe this will be entertainment and politics George Santos is going on his interview Media tour, tour now. <laughs> I, I mean, assuming he doesn't get killed for announcing that. I mean, I don't think he cares like sharing any Congress, any sort of like sitting. Yeah, he's in fight or then. flight right now. He's no, in survival he, he, mode. Yeah. He, he stopped caring before yeah. he even ran. He's I mean, in survival right mode right now, giving everybody's secrets away. Cameron knows this. I haven't really watched the news or really been on X or anything just to, to keep up. And a couple of days ago, I was like, you know what, man? Let me see what's on CNN real quick. And you want to know what the headline was when I turned on CNN was what? that a staffer from a senator had a oh. sex tape in the in the, <laughs> in the Senate. And so in I'm the like, Senate floor. Yeah. I was like, you know yeah. what? I don't need this. And I, just cut it, yeah. I just cut it right off. To Marty's point, I don't think it had enough of a reaction. I feel like it was like, yeah, oh man, that's, that's what crazy. I'm talking about. Right. We're so numb to that. That was, <laughs> it was like, yeah. we were like, all right, crazy. It was consensual. I'm like, you know moving for some reason. I don't know why. It's not good. It's bad. <laughs> what fashion trend from the past will make a surprising comeback in 2024? Jesse, don't you say Jinko G. Tommy Hill figure. Actually, I think that's right. I yeah. think like Polo, Tommy, yeah. you know, is going to. It's come. cyclical. We're, we're in the 90s. That's it's right on time. Metal ball old. necklaces. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going even older school. Uh, Stove top hats. Abe Lincoln style. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you're not going. I, you're not going back like to the to '60s. You're going to the 1860s. I got it. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I'd like exactly. to see that. See, I was thinking like puka shell necklaces. I think those are probably those are going to have to come back at some point. Unfortunately, I think, uh, I think when you know when like girls go to Mexico and they get their hair like one braid. I think that's going to start coming back. Just the one or two braids <laughs> on the side of the head. I feel I like yeah. some beads Michael in Scott it. did yeah. that when he came back from Jamaica. Remember, he had the little braid. Red yeah. over burnt sunburn with a couple beads. Look, inside. We're coming into an election year. You're telling me if there was a candidate who was just reasonably competent in either party, but was just dedicated to the stovetop hat and a suit. It'd kind of be like, I think that's the one. <laughs> I feel like I'd, I follow. I'd like, I believe him. He I, really is I feel like all out. It takes, it really takes some courage. And that's what this country needs right now. Like th- this person does not care what people think. He's I not like a populist. It. They're going to do what, what they feel like is best. And what they feel like is the best is wearing a stovetop hat at all times. I'm I like it. What I will like be it. the la- what will be the top viral internet challenge of 2024, and what will people mm-hmm. be doing? Something that will borderline get them killed, or j- honestly, <laughs> will get them killed. Well, that's all of them. I like. Hey, I feel like maybe there's something with the Panera drink that like actually is like harming people. I feel like that's going to be a challenge. Mm-hmm. Like, go- what, did you read Panera the caffeine drink? on that one? Oh, there's yeah, supercharged like lemonade 200... has killed two people. It's the equivalent of. Four espressos in one gl- one cup, and you get free refills while you're there. So it's four espressos in one cup, plus you know something like 300 grams of sugar or something like that. Jeez. So mm. it's just like, oh, I got energy, yeah, you know. Four but people style. hang out at Panera. Yeah, yeah. people hang out at yeah. Panera all afternoon on their laptop, and they just keep going up and getting these refills, not realizing how much they're putting in their body. Eh. And they, two people have died in the last like three months, like heart attacks. They keep selling it. Huh? Yeah, it's like they had like some pre-existing condition, but it yeah, it like affected their heart. But no, okay, Marty, I think you're right. I think people are gonna take the Panera lemonade, mix it with like alcohol or something, and basically recreate four loco. That's four loco, yeah, and that's gonna be the challenge. Four yeah. yeah, four loco. If you if you don't know what that is, that's four. It's I, it's supposed to be uh, two Red Bulls and four beers. They don't even make it anymore. You know, like that's. It's like FDA not approved, but that's what college kids drink nowadays. It's, I don't even know how I'd 
can't believe it. So that's going to be the internet challenge is, is homemade four locos or with and the then supercharged just like, I don't know, doing something on the homemade four locos or something like that. I could see a dance. Uh, I could see a dance of celebrities doing a dance for like Ukraine. Yeah, I feel like we need like a new mannequin challenge or just something harmless, you know, yeah. where we all like I walked in one day. Celebrities are going to be singing. I, one day during the height of the mannequin challenge, I walked into a pita pit. And they were like, yo, man, you walked in right when we're about to do the mannequin challenge. You can either be a part of the mannequin challenge or you can walk outside. And I was like, that was the owner of the pita pit. Okay. (laughs) Obviously, I stuck around to be part of the mannequin challenge, but that's how dedicated they were willing to send a customer away because we got to put, we got to get the mannequin challenge up. You know, like everybody's doing it. Yeah. I miss those days. All right, last one. Here we go. Which iconic TV show from the 90s will get a nostalgic revival in 2024? And what will the characters be up to? Family Matters. I am watching the, the Frasier be. reboot right now, actually. It's getting it's better good, yeah. as it goes. It, it, it starts a little tough because it's, it's trying to catch you up on all of these new characters and dynamics and stuff. So it's like three or four episodes in before you, it starts to settle down into like trying to introduce you to everybody and it like yeah it's getting better as uh, it goes i like it it'll probably it's gonna be seinfeld there. by the way remember i think jerry seinfeld made a comment about they're doing like a 30 Ooh, year anniversary so i could see seinfeld prediction. doing something cool derek you mentioned family matters but would it be a comedy or would it be like the, the fresh prince reboot where it's gritty where this is the this is the family <laughs> of a chicago cop with a sociopath weirdo who lives next door that's always you know just coming over uninvited i think jaleel white's the dad and, and I think he has, it's, it's now he's, you know, Carl. Eddie, mm. uh, Eddie, the son, you know, Eddie, yeah. he, the actual person has That's gotten right. arrested twice for not paying child support. He just got in jail the other day. I so thought he died. He probably won't be making the reboot. No, no Carl, he's in jail Carl right now. I just away. saw his mugshot going around for not paying. One of those people died, right? Carl, Carl, Carl yeah. passed away. Carl oh yeah. Passed away. I wouldn't Carl. mind a sister, sister reboot. That would be more likely to come because they all need money, but I love them and I, I love say, Sister Sister. What it's are like one of the best. Are doing these days? Listen, if UPN Martin? ever restarts again, we're going to get all the best stuff. Sister Sister, hey, Martin, we're... Living Color. I need that back. I need UPN to come back. Reginald Johnson is 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 alive and well, guys. I don't know. <laughs> it was Uncle Phil. So is Jackie. It was so Uncle Jackie, Phil. Girl. Sorry, sorry. Uncle Reginald Phil. Johnson. Yeah, a long time ago. Wrong show. All right, I know we got to wrap here, but, but Jackie yeah, from real, Sister Sister, she's still well and active, so that could definitely happen, Emily. I think that's going to happen. Did you know Family Matters was originally conceived as a Die Hard spinoff? Yes, uh, yes. Did you know that? Yeah. Right? Because but it was oh, an yeah, actual yeah. spinoff of Perfect Strangers. Yeah, but but the character Carl's character, Carl Winslow's character, was supposed to be the cop from Die Hard, right? Originally, and J- Jaleel White changed the whole texture of the show because he created the Urkel character, and Urkel oh. became this phenomenon. That oh. I, I thought you were going to say Crocodile Dundee too was a spinoff because <laughs> so he was in that movie too. <laughs> I enjoyed Young Urkel, but when when the when Jaleel White hit puberty and his voice changed yeah, and he had to yeah. like fake the Urkel voice, it was yeah, unlistenable to me. He started yeah. becoming Stefan a lot more, and people well, because he then the it. actor wanted to show his range, and he was like, "Well, I yeah. need an alter ego," like, and then this I'm, whole I'm, Stefan muscles, thing. You know? like, yeah, he had muscles. So At this dumb. point, his body was like shaped up. He's like he couldn't even hide it with like nerdy. He was like bulky. Anyway, that's the one that we're saying is coming back in 2024. His family matters. That's the yes. one. Yeah, right. or sister, like sister. It. I'm holding out for that one. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for our predictions of 2024. Everybody, uh, this is our last show of the year, obviously, because uh, the show is. Uh, you know, a couple of days before the end of the year. I just want to thank you for uh, listening, uh, being with us each week. It's been a blast and we get to do it because of all of you who are listening. And uh, we just appreciate it. We appreciate the support. It's, been, it's a lot of fun. It's a highlight of my week. And uh, thanks for a great year, everybody. Look forward to next year as well. Okay. On that note, for the last time in 2023, I'm Cameron Strang. I'm Jesse Carey. I'm Derek Miner. I'm Emily Brown. I'm Marty. All right, we will see you next year, everybody. Happy New Year. Thanks for 
for listening to The Relevant Podcast. Check out our features, interviews, and news updates every day at relevantmagazine.com. And make sure to follow Relevant on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest. For more great podcasts, browse the shows on The Relevant Podcast Network, which you can find at our site. And while you're there, don't miss the all-new era of Relevant Magazine. A new issue releases every other month at relevantmagazine.com. That was a weird one, wasn't it? Relevant Podcast Network.